Now we'll have uh, Robert Grant come and tell us about inspecting track, even underground track. And uh, I think you'll find this an equally fascinating presentation. Robert? Uh, there's the clicker. Thank, thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for having me here. It's a great pleasure and honor to be able to address you. And I hope you'll find what we've got to say interesting. The company I work for, NextGen Rail Services, is a subsidiary of a group in Chicago called Sasa Family Holdings, probably better known uh, as Chicago Freight Car Leasing. They have uh, a large fleet of leased freight cars under the CRDX label. Now, let's see if we can get this to go. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about track inspection technologies, and I've divided them into two uh, groups, uh, traditional and emerging. Uh, traditional are things like manual measurement, human eyes, rail floor detection with ultrasonics, which has been widespreadly used for, for a long time. Uh, rail profile measurement with lasers and track geometry systems have all been around for 20, 30 years. Uh, but emerging technologies uh, are what I want to talk a little bit about today, uh, and in particular, um, machine vision systems and ground penetrating radar. Uh, machine vision systems, if you imagine what we were listening to from Duos, uh, but instead of on the side of the track looking at the trains, we're on the train looking at the track. Uh, and uh, ground penetrating radar uh, has uh, recently become more available in the railroad industry because the processing costs have come right down. Uh, and that enables us to look into the track bed, as I'll show. Uh, other emerging technologies, LIDAR for uh, verification of plate size, uh, fitting loads down the track, um, looking at the ballast uh, profile, uh, X-rays looking into wooden ties, uh, track circuit measurements, that's looking for leaking insulated uh, joints uh, or other locations where current is, is leaking out of your track circuit. Uh, and signaling and radio communications have become more important uh, as in Europe with VRTMS and GSMR uh, and the equivalent in the US which is the PTC uh, which has a lot of radio communications that also need to be monitored and checked that they're working correctly. So looking at uh, machine vision and uh, the capabilities, what can we, what can we do with this? So we, we take like a, a, a high definition photocopy of the track as we go along by scanning it and we have cameras uh, underneath the car. We have uh, cameras looking at the sides of the rails uh, and, of course, a forward view. And what the algorithms are doing as they go along is they're looking for things like broken rails or engine burns, wheel burns, corrugation, squashed heads or rail head anomalies, we call them, uh, gauge corner cracking, that sort of thing, uh, wooden tie condition, fasteners, uh, underneath at the bottom of the picture there, there's a, uh, there are five fasteners missing in a row that the system has, has found. Uh, missing anchors, and uh, particularly in joint bars, which of course are a more safety critical component, uh, where bolts are missing, as you can see on the picture there, uh, or they often crack and break, uh, and uh, there's an example there. And all these defects are found by the machine. They're presented to the operator. He then verifies them dispatches the images with uh, location information so they can be immediately uh, attended to. Um, all this information gets published on a, on a website. And here's a bit of track coming into Dallas that we inspected some time back. Uh, and you can see the little icons uh, refer to the defects that are listed on the uh, left-hand side of the screen. Uh, and then we can home in on that uh, and get an image of that location. We can see the downward view of the track. In this case, there's a, a, a lot of uh, ballast on top of the, the, the ties there. Uh, and you can see there's a, a railroad crossing at that location. And the, the, you can also see the view of the sides of the rails, which are those lines at the top and bottom on the right-hand side. Uh, that's from the cameras that are, are doing the evaluation of the joint bars and so on. Um, Moving on from the machine vision to the ground penetrating radar, uh, what we're measuring with this is the, the depth of the ballast, the depth to where it is fouled, 
uh, and also a fouling in index, there's a thing called the Selic fouling index, uh, which gives a quantitative analysis of, of ballast fouling. Uh, we look for ballast pockets where there's been subsidence in the, in the track bed. Uh, we're looking for locations where there's water uh, underneath there that can cause all sorts of problems. We can check also automatically uh, all the culverts uh, if there's water seeping around the edges, maybe because they're blocked, that could cause a wash away and a flood. Uh, and uh, we can do also specific uh, subgrade analysis and identify what type of ties, whether they're wooden or, or concrete. The radar gram there is showing a, a ballast pocket. Uh, and you can see the way the ballast drops down. It's a bit like the ultrasound technology that you see in when you go to hospitals if you're uh, expecting a baby. Uh, it usually needs an expert to tell you what the image actually is, uh, but uh, for them it's very clear and it's easy to, to manage and see what's going on. Uh, the image on the top right, is the, the blue track, we went up the blue track and turned onto the red one, uh, and the color coding is telling us the uh, amount of fouling that is present. Uh, the blue track is much cleaner. The red track is probably an older track and it's got a lot more fouling in it or maybe it's on a route that carries coal or, or some other contaminant that over time seeps into the track. So uh, harnessing that has been something that we've been working on for a few years. Uh, the machine vision needs to be trained uh, it produces lots of false positives, you can imagine, leaves flying around under the car in the fall, snow, all sorts of uh, issues if the, if the ballast is covering the, the fasteners and so on. Uh, and so we had to create some rules and some programs uh, to quantify things. As we set off originally, we'd find every missing fastener. We could find uh, 200 missing spikes in a mile. And the customer would say, well, that's not of any interest at all because it's quite normal. Uh, what we want to see is where there are three or more in a row that are missing, because that's uh, an FRA defect. So we changed the rules and made the system uh, learn how to do it that way, uh, and then it's become a, a, a regular service. Uh, we do about 56,000 miles a year of track, uh, mostly on class ones, uh, and we go at line speed, which in the US is around 80 miles an hour on the class ones, and We've tested it up to 110 on Amtrak. We can also gather this data and fuse it into data management systems. So if you're looking here uh, at a, the geometry on the left, the rail profile down below, an image of the switch that we're looking at from the cameras, a location where it is, you can put everything together uh, to study a, an event or a defect and work out very quickly what the best way to resolve it or, 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 or fix it is. So just a couple of, uh, of examples of where we use these technologies together. This is a location where uh, there was a, a wide gauge issue uh, and uh, the machine vision says, hey, we've got a, a bunch of missing fasteners here. So we can relate the two problems together. You can also quickly see that it's at a transition from concrete to wooden ties going over a bridge, so there's probably, uh, and, and hence the geometry defect is caused by probably some movement in the track bed at that location. Here's another example where the ground penetrating radar has found some pockets of water, which are the red blobs on the track there, uh, and the blue icon relates to a less surface 62 geometry defect. So uh, we can see very quickly that the geometry is being affected by the presence of the water underneath. So instead of just throwing a tamper over it to, to fix uh, it quickly, we can go in and, and, and fix the drainage problem and then provide a more permanent solution so that that defect doesn't come back and haunt us in a few weeks' time. Here's another example of uh, a, a, a piece of track where uh, there's some high fouling associated with geometry defects. The little yellow and red icons are the geometry defects. Cross level, DIP31, top chord. These are uh, uh, standard uh, defect definitions from one of our customers. 
uh, and you can see on the radar gram where the, where the fouling is, and in fact, if you look at the image of the tracker along the bottom, you can see that uh, it's sprouting out into, into a series of mud holes. But hopefully we'd find this before it gets to that stage, because by then it's distorting and causing a, a significant uh, repair necessity, and if we can catch it in the bud, we can do something to stop it uh, growing. Another example uh, of the same, there's uh, a little pink piece by that uh, blue icon which is showing that uh, there's some fouling near the surface on one side of the track and that's at a cross-level defect. Uh, so we can see what's causing that particular defect. Uh, we can go further, we can fuse the data a bit. So the top uh, green line here is showing us the uh, depth to fouling uh, in, the, in the ballast. And the red line is a geometry surface. And you can see where there are some abrupt changes in the depth to fouling. There are also some higher spikes in the geometry. Uh, probably not a, a over a threshold to cause a, a, a defect right now. Uh, but uh, it, we can monitor that over time and predict when it's going to become critical. And we can also work out what we have to do to fix that particular problem, which is probably a bit of undercutting or, or, or shoulder cleaning or, or whatever, depending on the channels that are affected. Uh, we can do the same thing. We can look at it against the ballast fouling index. And you can see there are uh, two peaks in the geometry that coincide with peaks in the fouling index. Uh, but there are also, to the right, other bits where there are some peaks in the, in the fouling, but there aren't in the geometry. So in this case, we'd probably let, let a sleeping dog lie there. Uh, your ballast might be fouled, but if it's stable, there's no real need to go and fix it. Um, but where it isn't, then you need to go and do something about it. Uh, culverts, I mentioned earlier, is a, another interesting area coming out of this uh, technology. We, if we're fed a, a database with the uh, GPS coordinates of all the culverts on a track, we can microprocess those zones automatically with the ground penetrating radar, and we can quickly see if there's any sign of subsidence or, or issues with uh, water creeping around the edge of the culvert, maybe because it's blocked. Uh, and uh, the track image there is a particular case where that had happened. Uh, and uh, the image shows that you can see between two of the ties in the center, the ballast is dropping down underneath. That's because water had washed away part of the subgrade. Uh, and uh, at that particular location, uh, there was a flood, and it led to a major derailment as that bit of track was washed away, and uh, I think about 40 uh, oil tank cars went into a river. So uh, this sort of detection, early detection, can, can help to uh, avoid those sort of disasters. And so we've done a lot of work on that, and we're finding that uh, out of every 100 or so culverts that we look at, there are two or three that are suspect, and. Uh, need to be monitored uh, and inspected manually. So it's uh, another useful tool that comes out of uh, what we've been doing. Here we have some, uh, some rail surface defects and, and worn rail. And uh, as it says there, a chain is as strong as its weak weakest link. Um, from a, uh, looking at the rail profile, Someone might think, well, maybe we've got a, a, another six months of life in this rail before we need to remove it. But if you've actually got some uh, important uh, shelling or, or, or squashed heads or other issues on that rail surface, then you probably need to think about doing something quicker. And, and on the, uh, the, the map on the right, you can see all those icons are rail head uh, uh, defects. And uh, the ones with the little geometry lines are because the rail profile is worn. So you can pinpoint an area like that and maybe raise the priority for re-railing at that location. Uh, another little interesting uh, system that's come out and uh, is used quite a lot in Europe now is for automatic uh, switch inspection. And the system has like a 
an array of geometry systems in it that give you a whole uh, laser image, 3D image of the, of the turnout under load as the train goes through. And we combine that with uh, machine vision as well. And it can actually take all the measurements that you need to take in a switch as it goes through and it compiles them uh, and produces a report automatically for each switch. And the, the good thing about that is that it does it under load because normally a switch inspector will go and, and put his gauges in and make his measurements. Uh, but when the train is actually going over it, the whole thing's bending and twisting. And what might seem to be intolerance if it's uh, if you're just walking by and doing a manual check may well be out of tolerance and a significant amount of uh, the derailments are on switches and in yards. So this is a very quick and easy way to get around that. I think, uh, for example, Munich Station in Germany has about 2,000 switches and turnouts and it takes a day and a half to inspect the lot. So uh, big... Uh, uh, big, big sidings, big uh, depots, those sort of locations are, are of particular interest for this technology. Uh, I won't make you read all of this, uh, but <laughs> basically what it's saying is that we can, we, we can move forward and help reduce uh, derailments, we can make it more efficient, we can uh, enable predictive uh, planning of maintenance with these technologies, and that's why it says at the bottom that money spent on testing is a high yield investment. So I hope that's been uh, interesting for you. And uh, I think afterwards we have a, a chat session if anybody would like uh, to ask any more questions. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.